So we're in this very last part of the book of Esther, chapter 9, verse 1 to 10, verse 3. Here we see how the Jews finally triumphed over their enemies. Verse 2 says the Jews assembled on the specific day that had been set aside in the first decree to annihilate all the Jews, young and old, men, women and children. But because of the second decree that had been issued, because of Esther's courage, the Jews were allowed to assemble, to gather and to fight back. And they did so, but they did so honourably. So they only killed men and they did not take any plunder. Essentially, the plan to destroy the Jews produced the exact opposite results. 9 verse 22 describes the month as one when their sorrow was turned into joy and their mourning into a day of celebration. Haman's plan to spread hatred for the Jewish people and end in their total destruction recoiled back on him and he ends up being killed and his ten sons hung on the gallows. And in order to remember this incredible turnaround of events, Mordecai establishes an annual tradition that on the 14th and 15th day of the month of Adar, there would always be feasting, giving presents to each other and gifts to the poor. It was decreed that every generation of every Jewish family in every province keep this celebration alive, to always remember how a plan to destroy them and harm them had been turned around for their good. It reminds me of Genesis 50 verse 20 when Joseph says to his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. You know, God is always able to draw a bigger circle around every event and circumstance and bring his good out of it. And the way that God acts and turns things around should be remembered, should be remembered corporately and should be remembered personally. It's worth keeping a journal, writing down all the answers to prayer, writing down all the ways in which God comes through for you, and then using those things to build trust and faith and hope and expectation of what God can do in the future. You know, hope is the joyful anticipation of good things. So chapter 10 ends with the recorded rise of power of Mordecai becoming second in rank to the king. And the last verse is a fitting tribute to a great man. It says he was held in high esteem by his many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of all the Jews. You know, when you are consistently committed to doing the right thing, to operating out of integrity, eventually you always gain influence. Character makes trust possible and trust makes influence possible. So never, ever compromise on character for a quick or easy win. So that's the book of Esther, a book about courage and a book about character. It's worth thinking back over the book, the twists and the turns of the stories and thinking, what does it show me about God? Maybe, what does it show me about myself? And what must I do? What must I change in the light of that? They're good questions to ask about this book.